it's time we go into the union section of the pod, Mike. Just start Let's discussing some uh, unionization, some big ones, we must say. Yeah. Um, so we got back-to-back topics on unions, and it looks like our order is a little bit backwards. So hold on real quick. Let me correct okay. this okay. on the... Uh, we have a Word document that Kyle and I over here share to keep track of what the heck's going on when we're ranting. But anyways, this one is coming from a uh, game developer, Chris Kerr. Um, I want to say it's Chris Carr because that's what it is out in Raleigh, North Carolina. There's a whole family name, Carr, spelled the same way. Okay. okay. So, good I thing right. to know right there. I read. We'll see. Maybe he's related. Uh, yeah, so anyways, the title of the article is World of Warcraft Developers Form Wall-to-Wall Union at Blizzard Entertainment. I, thought, To be quite honest, I thought... This was already mentioned maybe a couple of years ago because of all the terrible things that were going on in Activision Blizzard with all the uh, workplace mix- misconduct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if any union was formed that. They, I think they may have tried to start one. I think I so too. And then like it... maybe compensation came through or that might have been around the same time when Activision Blizzard decided to be bought out by Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, could be a lot of things, but yeah. Yeah, it yeah. seems like a, you know, it was a past development, but here we are. So. Yeah. All right, so the new unit comprises over 500 developers representing the entire World of Warcraft development team. So the uh, Communications Workers of America, CWA, they're basically a giant union that look after other unions kind of thing. Uh, probably the easiest way to like try to explain that. Uh, has confirmed that over 500 employees at Blizzard's Entertainment have formed a wall-to-wall union at the Microsoft-owned studio. They love bringing up how it's Microsoft-owned now, especially because of the bad PR Microsoft's getting over their Game Pass. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, It's all about brand tarnishing. Let's get it. (laughs) The new unit is called World of Warcraft Game Makers Guild, WoW GG-CWA, and comprises the entire World of Warcraft development team, including designers, engineers, artists, quality assurance testers, and more. Another 60-person unit of Blizzard QA testers called Texas Blizzard QA United CWA has formed simultaneously in Austin, Texas. Staff were able to organize without interference thanks to a uh, seismic labor neutrality agreement that was struck in 2022. That agreement was subsequently extended to other Microsoft employees with Zen, uh, within Zenimax, paving the way for almost 250 workers at Bethesda Game Studios to unionize earlier this week. I'm maybe that's what I was thinking about the labor yeah. neutrality agreement that we covered in 2022. Dang, it's kind of crazy we've been doing this podcast that long. Um, side note about the CWA and just worker unionizations. This week it was approved in U.S. court by a U.S. judge that non-compete clauses are void and are banned. Yep. And that will go through in September 4th. Now, I don't know if anybody listens to us from a different country, but we have non-compete clauses here that sometimes you have to sign before you leave your company, which means you can't go compete or work for a direct competitor within the same town, same industry, that kind of thing. And yep. it basically means you would have to move towns in certain circumstances. Yeah, it's Not a good thing. So they got rid of that entirely. And that's pretty cool. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Show. Uh, Let me continue. So the CWA said Blizzard's latest union represents a, quote, significant milestone, end quote, and a journey that began when employees walked out and rallied at Blizzard's Entertainment HQ in California in 2021 to protest Activision Blizzard's response to the California DFEH sexual harassment lawsuit. Yes. Remember that? That's Mm. one of the, that's one of the things (laughs) I was like. We got to get out of here. Yeah, that was a wild walkout. Um, yeah. I think World of Warcraft struggled that day too, in terms of like servers and stuff. Even people on the game stopped playing because <laughs> just how outrageous. I know people to this day that like grew up playing World of Warcraft and they're done playing Activision Blizzard games. Yeah, it's insane, man. Yeah. So this victory, and this is a quote by CWA, by the way. This victory underscores the growing momentum of worker organizing in the video game industry and will hopefully continue to inspire other video game workers to form unions and raise industry-wide expectations for pay, benefits, and respect for workers' rights. That's a good point, and we can tie into the AI, voice models, voice creators, AI artists, um, like the use of AI in general that are taking up a lot of jobs for 
basically like the artisan labor force uh mm. like video game creators and i mean this is just to me is just a growing trend of what's to come sure is dude yeah so all right unionized blizzard devs want to ensure every voice matters in quotes um, speaking to a game developer about their decision to unionize, Blizzard senior software engineer Kevin v- Vig? 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 It's like Kevin Whatever. Feige, but not Feige, it's <laughs> Feige. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I wanted that's to say. Yeah. Is. yeah. Uh, said the unit hopes to make good on the company's mantra, every voice matters. Okay. <laughs> this is what they said. By forming a cross-disciplinary union, we seek to enshrine that value and ensure that the developers of World of Warcraft... QA included, which is very important. Some of those people are only getting paid like hourly on temp contracts. That's bad. Uh, for the QA. So bad. Yeah. Uh, we'll always have a voice in our workplace. They go on to continue saying that we want to both improve our working conditions and protect the things we love about Blizzard. Also, we can feel secure in pouring our talent and passion into making video, uh, to making World of Warcraft. Kevin explained that World of Warcraft team was inspired by the unionization efforts at Zenimax, Sega, and other studios that have made a collective push for better working conditions. Their resolve, he added, was only strengthened by the wave of mass layoffs and studio closures that have carved through the gaming industry. Yeah. I yeah. that that last one is like it's only strengthened by the wave of mass layoffs. Dude, how many times have we like covered mass layoffs? I feel like we cover mass layoffs every single episode this year and we're like 30 what 31 weeks into the new year maybe 32 just been a layoff like it feels every week yeah it's just closing it's like every week there's something and it gets to a point where like i don't want to be covering a layoff every week so it's like you know i'm trying to like filter out some stuff there was layoffs this week i know smaller studio that we didn't cover but it's like you know there's can't avoid it and so yeah i mean i totally i totally get the sentiment and it's like i think it makes sense might as well just unionize and get you know Fair compensation and kind of equal rights and might as well. I mean, because just say you know what he's saying, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's just it makes no sense. So these quotes are essentially from uh Kevin, correct? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, Blizzard senior software engineer Kevin said. All right, so Kevin continued to go on and keep in mind this is basically Activision Blizzard is uh hold up. I'll lose my train of thought. There we are. We are organizing? Is that where I'm at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, they start off both quotes with we. <laughs> so I was like, uh, okay, so sorry. I scrolled up to figure out where he was. All right. Kevin continued on saying that we organize not just ourselves, but also our fellow employees who make the game with us. By ensuring we're all treated fairly in our own workplace, we can focus ourselves on our shared passion at making great video games. Everybody says that nowadays. So... <laughs> Our union effort predates the recent layoffs, but witnessing them at first hand only served to solidify how important this effort is for the entire gaming industry. With our union contract, we can have a voice to minimize the impact of future layoffs and ensure we retain talent and knowledge whenever possible. So World of Warcraft GG, uh, the union, will now elect a representative bargaining committee from the World of Warcraft team and survey its members to understand which issues need prioritizing. And in quotes, Vig went ahead and said, uh, Vigi? Yeah, Vigi, I think is... Vijay. Oh, that's a very Vigier. bold <laughs> prediction. Vijay. First name Kevin goes with like a French last... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> While the team's voice will determine what we bargain for, we've also had numerous conversations with each other in the past few months. We suspect our top bargaining items will include layoff protections, improved work from home policies, transparency around performance and promotions, and pay adjustments to align with the expensive areas we live. Oh, baby. I think that's pretty fair. Yeah. I I think think that's pretty fair. Most of the time, like, pay does, is pretty much dictated by the expensive areas you're in, cost of living, but Mm -hmm. also if you unionize, you can definitely bargain more yeah like more we're power. in a union we're all together if you don't pay us all equally we're out that kind of thing and I don't you get to it. a tier system where it's like based on years of experience and not as much on merit however you can get kicked out of the union if you don't if you're not successful with your job it's a very interesting yeah. concept 
Uh, yeah, for sure. Oh, sure. It's all a negotiation because you're stronger in numbers. It reminds me, dude, not to say unions are full of apes, but like Planet of the Apes when he has the stick and he's doing like sign language, he's communicating. He's like, <laughs> he goes, ape snaps and he goes, are weak together strong. And he ties all the other <laughs> sticks together and it won't break. <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm super excited about the next Planet of the Apes movie, by the way. <laughs> um, let me go ahead and crush out this last bit of the, uh, the article here. So game industry uh, unions building momentum in the United States. So workers have formed a number of unions within Activision Blizzard and Microsoft in recent years. Prior to the Call of Duty and World of Warcraft maker being acquired by Microsoft, QA staff at Raven Software and Blizzard Albany succeeded, succeeded in their attempt to organize despite reports of interference. More than 300 QA workers at Bethesda also voted to unionize in January 2023, becoming the first union to form within Microsoft. I remember that. That was insane. Um, yeah. there's been a lot of unions, dude, like even Amazon's been getting unions. I think Chick-fil-A, what's it, Chick-fil-A, uh, Starbucks possibly? I mean, there's a lot of people that are getting unions, yeah. Walmart, some Walmarts out there. Yeah. But, uh, those efforts yeah. have continued post-merger in March, 2024, roughly 600 QA workers at Activision Blizzard formed the largest certified union in U.S. video game history when they established Q, uh, AQAU. Uh, mm. Bethesda Game Studio Montreal employees are also attempting to unionize and filled, filed for certifications with the Quebec Labor Board in June 2024. Now almost 750 employees have unionized across Blizzard Entertainment and Bethesda in the past two days. Mm. Big union okay. throw. Unions. We're, yeah, we're getting all unionized, basically. Listen. I'm just saying this, this QA union, they missed the opportunity of an Aqua CWA. I know it wouldn't have made sense in the acronym, but like, hey, Aqua just sounds like <laughs> it, it just sounds hard, better, dude. It? I don't know. It does kind of go hard. It wouldn't make sense in the acronym, yeah. but I'm just, just hear me out. Like, you just say, hey, Aqua union, like, here we are. <laughs> um, did you not, dude? Like, and we're going to cover the next article. Spoiler alert. Next article, we're talking about the Bethesda union. It's like, there's this yeah. and the Bethesda sort of unions it's like it's crazy to think about how much just in this past week <laughs> like unions have been pushed and these giant unions I mean, it's so funny when you say wall to wall it's literally wall to wall like everybody's on board so yeah first it started with like individual studios themselves at different locations that mm -hmm. are predominantly proficient in one or two aspects or different ips of the entire company and now it's just going to each one of the cities one by one by one yeah. and i think i think it's that kind of like that that realization that okay without this one city in the united states did it like austin was able to do it in texas that's kind of wild well we should be able to do it for sure in california and then they do it in california and it's like okay what's going on on the east coast or what's going on in europe we're up in canada right. so this is going to become more of the norm, and it's very interesting to see it happen in such a new industry. I would think most of the unions that I can think of are, they're definitely trade skills, which I think video games can kind of classify as a trade skill. But I, when I think of unions, I think more of like welders, pipe fitters, yeah. uh, mechanical contractors, duck workers, or uh, mm. uh, what's a good one? I mean, those are all good, but like... Yeah, they're carpenters, I guess, painters, like yeah. concrete workers. I, don't know. I was thinking of coal miners. But I don't know yeah, coal, coal miners have unions. Yeah. yeah, coal miners, oilers. Uh, there's um, ooh, I keep forgetting. I had it twice, and then you interrupt me. <laughs> um, <laughs> my bad, bro. Uh, train, trains, trains. trains the, so. the the gotcha. freights have like some of the best unions in the entire country. They have like crazy good benefits after 15 years when you're finally like. You can basically retire. It's like, like it's insane. <laughs> oh yeah, vested. It's so wild. They're yeah. untouchable, but they also have like a. It's not a monopoly. It's like a territorial monopoly, a controlled monopoly, where like each freight line has its own section of the country. Oh, interesting. I and know they that. own all the tracks, and then they rent them out to the other freights or commercial, um, not commercial, uh, res uh, public transit. I guess Amtrak and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah, bro. Uh, this is kind of unrelated, dude. But like, I just want to go on an Amtrak and just cruise for five hours. Bring your laptop, 
out the window. You could totally do that. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know, it'd be sick. Well, I, I sent you that video, didn't I? Yeah. yeah dude. About Amtrak. Yeah, yeah. I was like, it's yo, we vibe, can take an Amtrak dude. to it's Glacier National Park, bro. It's like from Chicago. It's yeah. like 18 hours, but we could get like one of those, uh, what, what's it called? Like the, the little private rooms to yourself with the bed yeah. and so. It's yeah. pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty sick. It's like your own kind of little area and you could just kind of, you know, oh, yeah, bring man. a book, bring your Game Boy Vance, like going crazy. Saying. Do whatever you want. Yeah, they got Wi-Fi, everything on the on the trains. They're sick. Yeah. It's, it's pretty nice. Dude. The idea of just like sitting on there and just not having to worry about anything for a little while and just <laughs> get some work done or something. Sounds nice. I've taken I've taken the train from Charlotte, well, and Raleigh all the way up to Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah? Like, in college, because I had a really piece of crap car and I wouldn't make it up there and I <laughs> didn't have enough money to fly. So it was like, all right, let's take yeah. the train. The, the route goes right to the person that I was seeing in college. Yeah. It was like, sick. Yeah. Let's go. It probably, it honestly probably is cheaper than flying, huh? Like just popping on a train and yeah, yeah. If you if you fly like if you take coach or spending like less than hundred bucks there and back, yeah, it's not bad. I know it's like I think it's like sixty bucks from Charlotte to Raleigh, but that's a pretty demanding route. I recently looked up Charlotte to Atlanta. It's an all nighter, and I think it was like fifty bucks. It's an all nighter. That's interesting. Yeah, a lot of stops. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they stop at every train station on oh, the way. Okay, it's not yeah. like one stop to the next. They stop at the trains. Oh, it's kind of like see. riding the bus. Like you stop yeah, at every. I see. Yeah. yeah. Well, not everyone, but like bus is a little bit different because it's based on demand. Yeah. Well, hey, dude. Take a train from Charlotte up to Bethesda, Maryland. I wonder how long that would take. Dude. I wonder, you know. <laughs> this is the thing. Find out. <laughs> you can find out one day because Bethesda, as we teased in the last article. Is almost uh, 250 devs unionized. It is the first wall-to-wall union at a Microsoft video game studio that Blizzard then followed up with on the World of Warcraft team. But yeah, it's uh, pretty crazy stuff. So I pulled the GamesIndustry.biz article, James Bachelor, but this was on I think LA Times reported this, and especially the WoW one. Like a I think lot it was even big, on Forbes as yeah, well. A lot of big outlets. Um, I think it. I think I even saw it in like Fox. Fox wouldn't News. Be surprised. Wouldn't be not, yeah. would not be surprised. But yeah, dude, everyone's covering this. It's uh it's extensive. So let's talk about it. hundreds of staff at Fallout and other schools developer does game studios have unionized joining the Communication Workers of America. CWA announced the formation of the new union via its website, adding that 241 developers either signed a union authorization card or used an all excuse me, used an online portal to indicate they wanted union representation. CWA's post on X, or formerly known as Twitter, indicates the new union, uh, one BGS USA, represents a majority of developers across Bethesda Game Studios, Dallas, Rockville, and Austin. This is the third Zenimax. Wait, what was that? I said Rockville, Maryland. That's where the train stop was. I was just saying, dude. <laughs> this is right there. Right there. This is the third Zenimax owned studio to unionize with this organization. Following Bethesda Game Studios Montreal last month, known as One BGS Montreal, and Zenimax Workers. CWA added that Microsoft, which owns Bethesda parent Zenimax, has already recognized the union. According to the announcement, this is the, quote, first wall-to-wall -wall union at a Microsoft video game studio, meaning that it represents a range of workers regardless of their job, including artists, engineers, designers, and programmers. We are so excited to announce our union at Bethesda Game Studios and join the movement sweeping across the video games industry, said Mandy Parker, senior system designer and member of the CWA. It is clear that every worker can benefit from bringing democracy into the workplace and securing a protecting securing a protected voice on their job on the job we're thrilled to get down to brass tacks and win a fair contract proving that our unity is a source of real power to positivity positively shape our workers conditions our lives and the company as a whole cwa also represents unions uh within studios within activision blizzard which is also owned by microsoft latter entered a labor neutralization agreement with the union in july of 2022 and uh which added workers to bethesda's parents at a max back in may other CWA game unions can be found at Sega of America and Stranger Things VR developer Tinder Claws. Back in May, Microsoft shut down four Zenimax on the studios, including Hi-Fi Rush, Creator Tango Gameworks, and Redfall developer Arcane Austin. Rest in peace. Can't believe it's been yeah, a few months already. IP. It's crazy how they closed it down, too. Yeah, they were like, okay, that's good enough. I'm out. It's like, what? Yep. <laughs> this is a good game, guys. We do look like we were saying the last article, dude. When there's uh, uncertainty like this, it's like... It's kind of the best option, I feel like. It's just try and unionize. Kind of try to be one. Have as much power as you can. Yeah, it's... So. Uh, I mean, this... 
the, what does she say? We are excited to announce our union um, to join the movement sweeping the video game industry. I mean, that's just a statement that is going to resonate with anybody that's been paying attention because there's been so many freaking layoffs, dude. Yeah. Like, I, like the first start of the week, it felt like there was 20,000 people laid off in one company. And then it was like, it was literally like Microsoft got lays off, like laid people off. That's not even their Xbox division. Um, Twitter laid everybody off. There was Apple. There was Facebook was another big one. And they just kept laying more and more off. And then it was like, then there was divisions of those umbrellas. It was like Meta then had layoffs in their VR department after they launched or hyped up their VR new headsets. Same thing with Apple. Same thing with yeah. uh, like Facebook. All this kind of crap. It was insane. Um, Microsoft doing that with Xbox now and all, all the different studios. It's just not good for yeah. the the modern worker yeah. um in tech and it's just not fair to them so to create a union is really all they can do is to protect themselves yeah. really i mean it's yeah it's pure unadulterated facts i would say like look it's like kind of all kind of all you got at this point but um i think certainly this could set a precedent have some maybe smaller studios consider this if they can um maybe even bigger studios be like hey you know, we have there's big names doing this now doing like these wall-to-wall -wall unions maybe maybe this is something for us to consider and i feel like we'll see maybe a little bit of a domino effect if maybe some other um developers maybe jump on board with you know a union because um yeah to have two big companies like this just um all of a sudden just be like bam they're gonna, we're yeah, gonna unionize. it was definitely coordinated too because yeah. they they gotta have like contacts between each other just based on the nature of being under the umbrella of Xbox and Microsoft. Yeah. Just it's true. Yeah. You know, they might have met each other at like conferences and stuff. It's like, you know what? We should probably strike Microsoft at the same time to show even a stronger like unity than yeah. we could by one studio. Cause it's not like one studio's problem now. Like it was showing it's just Bethesda Game Studios in Montreal. It's like, no, let's do the entirety of Bethesda Studios. Let's do the yeah. entirety of Activision and Blizzard. It's a very interesting concept. And I think that's really the only way you can protect yourself, especially with the way these, I don't know, man, like these massive tech giants with uh, feels like unlimited money right now and laying off everybody. And then the next month reporting quarterly earnings higher than it's ever been. And then the stock market rallies and the CEOs get all this money and then they start bragging about it. It's like, dude, that's messed up. You just, you laid off 20,000 people and you're celebrating about it I'm because saying, you were man. able to get what like 50 million dollar bonus per executive like come on it's not cool yeah it's like it's, it's big to think like what are we really doing here dude it's like yeah it's but it, then when you step back and think about it, it's like yeah that's you know i did just realizing how kind of you know these companies are focusing on these like year over year growths and you know kind of what are we are we seeing much growth and it's like they don't it's like all right it's a uh, time to clear house on some studios that don't deserve it let's go like yeah i mean so. the other thing is too it's it's just a a capitalistic point of view when you have companies that have to get that positive that green number of growth every single quarter otherwise their stocks just plummet or the investors pull out they start losing everything it's just um it's kind of a snowball effect and I think they try to do whatever they can to prevent that from happening. And if that means laying off like 10,000 or more employees, then it is what it is. Kind of <laughs> it is what it is. You hate yeah. it. But... Yeah, it's, uh... I think it's messed up ultimately. And I think unionization is probably the right thing to do when, when you're at this level. Yeah. yeah or you I... need to have like, you need to become unfireable. You need to have some type of like licensing processes that's one of the reasons why unionization and like trade skills matter so much because a lot of the plumbers, welders, like duck workers and construction, they have licenses that protect them because it's like, you can't just go fire these people and then expect to go pick somebody off the street. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. not how it works. Yeah. Like, you know, when you have a good plumber and you know, when you have a bad plumber, yeah. that's sure. just what, like, it's going to show up. You pay the right money for the good plumber. Because the good plumber can demand it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that just goes with any trade skill. Yeah, true. yeah. There's good developers kinda... out there. There's good designers exactly. out there. Yeah. There's good, um, Pay good... the good ones. Yeah. 
and help the bad ones become good ones. It's that simple. That's and if how you business make, should be if done. you make a breakout hit, you don't punish them. You know what I'm saying? No, you don't <laughs> shut down a studio after like Hi-Fi Rush comes out and it makes an excellent game, wins awards, ton of recognition, and then close them down because you're just like, okay, that's that's all we well, needed from you. There's a couple other like, crap studios, but hey, we gotta like gotta you know yeah. include this one for some reason. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. There's a there's a lot. Of, I remember that rant that we had what like two months ago. You're gonna close Hi-Fi Rush Studio and then leave on a couple other ones that I think you and I agreed was kind of trash and they haven't put out anything good in a while. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. This does make sense, dude. It's like they just literally like just threw up a dartboard and they were like, "All right, which section? I will do the Zenimax section." And they just eat, <laughs> just throwing darts eat? and yeah. Or, mm. or what? Uh, who was it? Ubisoft went ahead and just started selling different divisions of their um their their company. Just like, okay, bye. Like, what's the, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, They're in like, a different trouble altogether, though. Yeah. Oh man, it's uh whatever. Uh it's it's just a mess sometimes, Mike. Especially this past year, dude. There's just been, just been a lot of mess going on in this industry. And um but yeah, dude, it's yeah. good to see look, it's good to see new studios forming. But it's also yes, good it to see people at this point just trying to take matters in their own hands and just be like, look, this is the kind of yeah. the let's just try and get as much control as they can, you know, because you just never know. <laughs> it's like Yeah. I mean the other the other thing is one can probably argue that because these corporations are so big and kind of soulless with the way they handle things, it's like it's only down to the numbers. It's not about down to the people, a part of it. I think we're seeing more and more execs. I don't know the exact reason why they're leaving. They could be leaving for greed for all I know. I don't know them on a personal level. But the, the train of thought, like, I, I want to believe that some of them have been leaving to create their own studio because of what they saw happen under the corporations that I saw. For example, we just covered like Blue Scarab being formed. Helldivers 2 went through that huge mess, and Battlefield had pretty bad circumstances go through it. So those people going and just being like, you know what, I'm done with this big corporation stuff. Let's go create our own thing. I feel like that's a very strong thing that people do when they're creating something new. They leave because their current company is pissing them off a little, or they're like, this atmosphere is toxic. I want to go do something that's better. And then they take their friends with them. They're like good, <laughs> yeah. like productive members of the team to create something new. Which is why I mentioned the non-compete stuff. Because with a non-compete, you couldn't do that. You can go create your own thing. Now you can, September. So I think it's just a good opportunity. And there's going to be a lot of change happening in the workforce in general. And I think it starts with the gaming industry. Then yeah. it's going to go into like fast food workers. Then it's going to go into like restaurant trains. There's and all these other. I think eventually everybody's going to be unionized. So long as this capitalist extreme scenario keeps happening, you go to the airports. Uh, the flight attendants unionize. You know what I'm saying? Gonna... Yeah. And I just realized I said all that while wearing a Rage Against the Machine shirt. <laughs> what so... am I the family? <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody that's ever listen to zach de la rocha talk about corporations and greed <laughs> yeah. and power the ultimate yeah, band you, right there yeah, i think stuff. you understand where where my point of view is <laughs> in terms of this topic yeah. Yeah. oh 